I mean, growing up, football never really was the plan. You know what I mean? So it was kind of just more so whatever I could do at the time and whatever could get me at the house. So I played baseball real heavily, and that's what I thought I was going to actually do for the rest of my life. But it just so happened I went to one of my brother's football games and I just watched him play. And from the stands, I just felt like I was supposed to be out there. And plus, their quarterback did terrible. I figured I could go out there and do better. And that's honestly how it all started. But as far as the impact that it had on me now, I feel like I can just kind of switch and adapt to anything, honestly. When I was a quarterback and they switched me to receiver, it was pretty hard on me mentally. But as far as the skills and just being able to learn a new position, it was no different from playing different positions in baseball or basketball. It was just the skills were transferred. When it first happened, when they first gave me the call, they told me to come into a meeting. I was in a quarterback meeting when it happened. They took me out to the meeting, sent me to the head coach office, and he was just like, you got two options, honestly. Either you're going to play, just not as a quarterback, or you just got to figure out, you can sit on the bench for a long time until your time actually comes. And honestly, I mean, I was, my stomach kind of dropped a little bit. I was a little sick because I just felt like I worked so hard to be a quarterback, and that was the dream forever to go throw touchdowns in the league once I started playing football. But so when I first switched over, it, I'm not going to lie, me and my receiver coach kind of bumped heads a little bit. I just really wasn't committed to the, the whole process. And it took me probably a full year to actually buy in and say, I can maybe do this for the rest of my career. So it, it hurt at first. I just felt like I failed. It was hard to tell my mom. On, I know she had the same vision that I had. So just breaking that news to her, I didn't want her to think I was a failure. And my whole family just to think like, oh, you're not as important because you're not the quarterback. You're not the main guy anymore. It took some getting used to. But now I couldn't picture myself playing quarterback. Uh, receiver is literally the only thing I think about when I go to work every morning. It's just I actually enjoy it. And just to be in that room with the guys that I have now, the whole thing is just I love being a receiver now. Well, early on, I didn't really know what the ranks meant. Because I was the first person in my family to kind of go through what I went through. The first one to be an athlete trying to play at the next level. Uh, my brother played basketball, but we didn't really deal with what a five-star was or what it was. My mom was just trying to figure it out all on her own. Like, just let me put him in the best place that he can be to pretty much get to where he needs to go. So when they told me whatever I was, a two-star or a three-star, I didn't know what it meant. And I didn't know what came behind being a five-star. So it was just, it, I didn't recognize it until I went to one of those camps where they make you run a 40. I ran super slow. They make you jump. And I just see all these athletes. I'm like, all right, so now I see what I'm competing with. You know what I mean? And that kind of motivated me going to the camps and seeing how everybody else was doing and just how talented everybody else was. I just knew at that point, I was like a six foot, 150 pound kid that I had to bring something else to the table because maybe being the fastest or being the strongest wasn't going to be it. So you could say it motivated me, but at the same time, I didn't care enough because I felt like there was other things I could definitely bring to the table. Um, I remember after not going drafted and finally realizing I still had an opportunity to go. That first that first year, I was really just mad, you know, just, just mad at, I don't even know who I was mad at, more so myself, I guess, for not really accomplishing the goal that I set out for myself. But I was just angry just being in the building and realizing and I don't want to say it was like jealousy or just hating, but it was just hard for me to see people, you know, they got drafted, they got everything they wanted. And then it was me who my mom still got a mortgage or my family's still struggling. I couldn't necessarily help them where I wanted to. Like I figured all this time I'd make it to the league and I'd change my family's life forever. So going through that, that first year, it just, it just took a lot. It was a, a shock to my confidence then. I ended up making a team and that kind of just brought me back up a little bit, just helped me to kind of bounce back and realize that I could still accomplish everything I wanted. It just, it was going to be a harder fight, you know, and that definitely motivated me at that point just to keep going and keep fighting because I knew what I had at home. I knew who was depending on me. And like I said, I mean, I really got a lot of love for my family and they just kept me push, pushing and motivated and working hard every day. Um, I think it's definitely helped because that's three different personalities, three different playing styles. And if you can have success in different situations and show people that you can make it work however the situation falls out, I feel like that's a good trait to have or a good benefit to have. And guys will probably want that on their team because if you're adaptable and can just, that's the one thing that's guaranteed about football. Nothing will be the same. You know what I mean? We'll go in, we can watch as much film as we want or study a player as much as we want. When we see them that next time, something's going to be different, you know? You can't really guarantee what's going to be out there. So going through all that, like, and those were some pretty big name guys that I played with, Tom, Cam. It, it was rough for some points, but like I said, just learning how to adapt and be able to work my way and fit into any situation, I think is something that the coaches probably value. And hopefully something I keep showing moving forward. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Tom had been in the league almost the same amount of time as I've been born, you know? And I remember he told us when we first got into the league, I mean, he's seen it all, you know, like he's seen 
Randy Moss, Wes Welker, Julian Edelman, you know, some great guys. And at this point, we all pretty much had to just get to his level, which is the truth because, I mean, he's done it. He's proved that he could do it at a very high level. So I remember me and all the other rookie receivers coming in, we were just trying to figure out what we could possibly do to just get to his level if we could, you know what I mean? If that's even possible to get to Tom Brady, you know what I'm saying? Like that was just, but it was a real wake up call for all of us, I remember, because we just had to realize how fast it happens, you know, like, yeah, you just got drafted or yeah, you just signed to the team, but now it's time to really work and earn all that money that they probably gave you. So. And with Cam, it was just, Cam probably played a real big part of my career on to this point. Just the way he came in and the way he kind of brought the team together, or at least brought all the receivers together, it was definitely beneficial to have for my career, at least. It's helped me. It gave me a guy, from where I'm from, Cam Newton was kind of like a big figure, you know, being right outside Atlanta, playing with him and just learning him as a person. The way he approached the game, he definitely helped me a lot. Um, and I'm excited about Matt, first and foremost. I mean, not gonna lie, Cam was my guy for sure, but Matt is definitely, that's a talented kid. Like he earned everything he came in and got. You can't be mad at him for being in the situations that he in because he definitely came in and worked his butt off. But I'm excited to see how the whole team goes this season because we all, we talked to him the other day. We told him that we got his back and we feel like with him at the head, we can definitely go out there and make plays, you know, and continue to, or build off of what we did last year. Last year wasn't the best year for us. We can come back and probably bounce back and just take a step in the right direction. I mean, I'm definitely excited. The receiver room, the defense, the old line I mean, everybody. I just feel like it's definitely been a lot of hard work put in this offseason. We're excited to go out there and show up for the first time on Sunday. It's just a unmeasurable respect, honestly, because you go in there every day, you know what you're going to get out of him, you know? Like, it's not one of those guys who's going to be up one day and down when he's going to stay that fine line and you know what it takes to impress him. And he's a defensive coach, you know what I mean? So that's going to take a lot for an offensive player. But at the same time, at least you understand that's what it takes, you know, to be great and to go out there and put your best foot forward, which is ultimately all he wants out of all his players, I believe. So he's got to go in out there. I mean, he got to go in there every day and <laughs> be ready to work. Like I said, I mean, he got the most utmost uh, respect for me because, like I said, I know what he's going to be every day. And at the end of the day, all he cares about is the team. It's not about one individual or how great that person or that personality of that person. If you're not benefiting the team, then... <laughs> You're not really in his best interest. So, like I said, you just go in every day and I can respect that. And that's somebody I'm happy to play for. And my whole thing this year is just to build off of what I put out there last year. The only problem is I didn't do it for a full season, you know? So there's still a lot of questions around my game. Can I make it around a full season? Can I go out there and be a dominant player? Not a guy know who I am. I think my number one goal is just can I be consistent all the way through a 16, 17 game season, you know, and just going out there and putting my best foot forward every practice, every game, and just being able to help guys around me. I'm not really a, a loud, rah-rah speaker, but just being able to help guys. Now that I've been here for a couple of years, I can kind of give insight on what I think or what maybe the team probably thinks and just being more of a leader and being more vocal in the locker room. Well, originally, hands down, I would say my mom 10 out of 10 times because, I mean, ultimately, she put so much into me and my brothers and just our overall entire family that I know it was hard for her and we put her in a hard situation just trying to play all these sports, you know, and accomplish all these things. She would have sold her kidney, you know, what I mean, just to make sure that we had the best in life. So I always try to make sure, I, you know, what I'm saying at least pay her back so she don't feel like anything she did was for nothing, you know, and just know that, I mean, we love her. She love us. And at the end of the day, this wouldn't be without her. But at this point, it took a little bit more than that to keep coming in and play for Bill Belichick every day. So the fact that I want to be somebody great, you know, I want to be somebody that underdogs can look up to and say, well, if he did it, you know what I'm saying? It's possible for all of us. So just knowing that there's people who probably watching me and they might not be in the best spirits right now, but one day they'll get everything they want. And I can be somebody who speak to that and attest to that and just keep putting out a public uh, figure for them. I can give you three, Troy Brown, Julian Edelman, and Cam. Well, in my world, Troy Brown is kind of like the godfather for the slots, you know, like we watch his tape all the time. He go out there, he play hard. He did what they asked him to do, made plays consistently. And he's still around today to kind of tell me what he was thinking back then when he was playing. So having him has been real beneficial for me. Jules, this is probably one of the toughest dudes I ever met in my life, honestly. And maybe everybody don't like him or like his personality or, you know what I'm saying? Like, he definitely is an acquired taste for some people. But Jules, man, he, he's a he's a workhorse. And just seeing him go out there every day, no matter how beat up he was. And I've seen some dog days with Jules. He always fought through and made plays consistently, you know, even when he was double coverage. Or no matter what it was, he went out there and gave his best every day. And I would say Cam because, I mean, he talked to me, you know, when things weren't necessarily looking my way or I wasn't probably the best player that I could have been. I mean, he would let me know or he would holler at me and just be like, man, you know, you could be somebody or you can make this play or he'll tell me what he was thinking from a quarterback perspective. So just those three, you wrap them in a one bundle and that's what I try to portray every day.